Okay, so today we are uh, doing experiment 34A, preparation of benzoin by thiamine catalysis. This reaction is basically um, involves aldehyde, which is benzaldehyde. So two moles of benzaldehyde, they react in presence of thiamine hydrochloride and they convert into benzoin. Uh, this particular reaction, 34A, is actually a green example of a green chemistry experiment because the catalyst that we are using it's safe to use. Um, another way of um, actually synthesizing benzoin, this is benzoin, and two moles of benzaldehyde. This can alternatively can be made through the um, sodium cyanide. You can use sodium cyanide as well, but sodium cyanide is a not a um, safe reagent to use because the cyanide ion it itself is very toxic and um, thiamine hydrochloride basically it reduces the dangers in case of any accident and also the waste production by thiamine hydrochloride is not um, you know it's kind of safe for the environment and this reaction is actually of the high energy efficiency so that's the reason it is considered to be the good alternative to um, synthesize the benzoin from the benzaldehyde. Now what are the things that you need or what are the reactants that uh, we need for this reaction to do? So this is thiamine hydrochloride, benzaldehyde, ethanol, di water and aqueous NaOH. So I just freshly prepared this aqueous NaOH and we're going to use all these reactants in order to synthesize benzoin. Okay, so here I weighed 1.5 grams of thiamine hydrochloride, so you can note down the weight. Okay, so now I transferred thiamine hydrochloride into the um, 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. And this is 2 milliliter of the DI water. And I'm going to transfer this into the Erlenmeyer flask and I will dissolve it. Okay, now I'm going to transfer 95%, a 15 milliliter of 95% ethanol to the Erlenmeyer flask. Um, you can see that thiamine hydrochloride is already dissolved in um, two milliliters of water. This is 15 milliliter of ethanol. I'm gonna transfer it in and then I will dissolve until it becomes a homogeneous solution. Okay, now I poured um, 15 milliliters of 95% ethanol and then it's completely dissolved and you can see now this is a homogeneous mixture. To this, I'm going to add 4.5 milliliters of the aqueous sodium hydroxide and then again I'll swirl it. Okay, so now this is aqueous sodium hydroxide. I already measured 4.5 milliliter into it and then I'm going to transfer this into this Erlenmeyer flask which has a mixture of thiamine hydrochloride ethanol and water okay now you can see i just um, poured 4.5 milliliter of sodium hydroxide into the flask and you can see the color it's kind of bright yellow color now i'm going to swirl the flask until this um, is, i mean bright yellow color turns to the pale yellow color now you can see i'm swirling it and it's turned to be the pale yellow color so it took about i would say two minutes of swirling to turn into the pale yellow color now I'm going to add the uh, benzaldehyde into this solution and um, this is, I opened this bottle fresh because benzaldehyde can be uh, oxidized to the benzoic acid. So we would need a benzaldehyde which is not contaminated with any of the benzoic acid. So I will transfer about 4.5 milliliter of the benzaldehyde to this flask. So I'm trying to take the benzaldehyde from this uh, bottle it has septum in it as you can see it has a septum in it and I'm you know poking the syringe into it to take out five uh, four point five milliliters of the benzaldehyde So I would say it's about 4.5 milliliters of the benzaldehyde in the syringe. Okay, now I am dispensing the benzaldehyde into the flask. Okay, 
you can see the observation is still you know looks like pale yellow okay now you can uh, see it I'm gonna stop at this flask and I will put it in the dark for two days and then again I'm gonna observe it and record the observations later so now the flask was uh, sitting for two days now after two days it has a good amount of crystal so I don't have to scratch it scratch the um, uh, flask with the glass rod in, in order to initiate the crystallization now I am uh, going to break the crystalline mass with this help of the spatula and then I am going to swirl it and filter it in the drip method. Funnel funnel is ready, you can see, I already wet the filter paper with DI water, uh, one more time, now I am going to open the crystals, Now I have here 10 milliliters of the ice cold water. So I'm going to take it in two parts, 5 5 milliliter, and I'm going to wash my crystals with this, this um, chilled DI water. So I'm going to wash the crystals with the chilled DI water 5 5 milliliter two times. Now I have washed the crystals um, with 10 milliliter, 5 5 milliliter, two times uh, with a chilled DI water. Now I am going to let it sit for five minutes on the viewplug funnel, and then I will um, remove uh, this filtrate and let it sit another five minutes, and then I will transfer into the wash glass and let it sit overnight and dry it completely. It's not written in the lab manual that you are going to remove. It, uh, the liquid from the uh, filtration class the filtrate and then let it sit for 5 minutes but I will do it because it will enhance the um, drying process for the efficiency of the drying. Okay, after drying on the Buchner funnel uh, it does look like this. Now I am going to transfer into the watch glass. Okay, so now I transfer the um, my um, benzoin which I was filtered, the crystals I filtered into the watch glass. I let it sit overnight um, and now these are the dried uh, crystals of the benzoin. So before recording the melting point you can check the weight. So that's the weight. I would say 4.233 grams. Okay so now I am taking the melting point of benzoin. Um, this is the setup you can see. This is the uh, Vernier LabQuest. This is the um, interface. Usually you use the mobile phone for the interface. Now here I'm using the Vernier uh, LabQuest 2 as an interface to record the temperature. So you can see the capillary tubes are already in. And when it is started melting, I will record the melting point. Okay, so my compound has started melting now. And uh, it's the range, and uh, it's it's done. So this looks like it's a kind of a pure compound, uh, as far as the melting point is concerned. So I'm not going to recrystallize it, and um, and moreover, I'm not continuing the experiment to experiment number thirty-four B, where you would need the very pure benzoin in order to. I synthesize the uh, what is that benzyl so um, I will I stop doing this experiment here so this is basically the synthesis of benzoin so you can calculate the um, percent yield based on your theoretical yield you are going to write the pre-lab with table of reactants and products and then um, just calculate the percent yield mentioned in the report